supporting you and providing help wherever possible and whenever possible. So we've got Nevis Teresi, who's coming to us from Australia. I believe it's midnight right now or near it, uh, which is um, late down there. I don't know if there's anyone else here from um, Australia, New Zealand, or any of the uh, neighboring uh, areas, countries. Anivis um, is very passionate about uh, supporting learners, and I think that's uh, the value of a caring teacher, and um, she is valued indeed. Uh, she was living in Italy for many years. She's now back in Australia. She's been teaching English as a foreign language, English literature, drama, business. Her background is indeed in business, English exam preparation, Cambridge, FCE. He was also translate from Italian to English, so she's bilingual. She teaches both face-to-face -face and online, and you can read more about her work. She's also been involved in connecting online and uh, started presenting in 2015. She also presents at other online um, events that I organize, but uh, she also supports, as I said, the participants and does a lot of the uh, back channel work. She's also involved in ITEFL. She gave a talk uh, at ITEFL, Young Learners TSIG, also online. So that's a little bit about Nevis. There's a lot more, but we're not going to get into that. Tom Hodges is also bilingual. He's been living in Venezuela for many years, 40, uh, to be precise. He's originally from Liverpool, and he's also involved in um, MOOCs. He's um, a Moodle expert, and he helps out on Moodle MOOCs and Moodle for Teachers events. Every event, including uh, EVO events, EVO for 17, and he's been doing this for Moodle for Teachers. Nevis has also been uh, involved in um, moderating Electronic Village Online, or EVO as it's called. You can read a lot more about Thomas. Uh, there are lots of connection issues right now for political reasons, I believe, in Venezuela. So Tom is probably very frustrated for not having to be online, as he used to be 24-7. So maybe it's a good thing you're getting some rest, Tom, and you deserve it. All right, so here we are. I'm going to um, pass on the mic to uh, Tom and Nevis. They've already got the mic, actually. Uh, so they can tell you a little bit about uh, teamwork, because that's what they've been doing, teaming up and working together. So I'm going to put myself in the background, uh, get rid of them, and, and Mike. I just want to mention before I forget, uh, if you're interested, uh, there is a video on what to do with the badges. Many of you are asking, well, what do I do with my badges? Well, there's a video on what to do with them. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nelly. That was wonderful. Tom, why don't you begin, just so that if anything goes wrong and we lose you, at least we've had you to talk at the beginning. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Hi everybody, Tom here. Well, today uh, Neves and I are going to talk about teamwork, and we'll be talking about the, the work we've been doing for the last uh, two years, I think it is now, Neves, isn't it? Two or three, three years. Um, and we'll be explaining to you all the basic things that you should be doing for working in teams. That's about it from me. <laughs> I don't pass over to me because my, uh, my connection here is very bad and it might uh, fail at any moment. Okay, Neves? Okay, I just had my mic off. Um, thank you for yeah. that, Tom. Um, in a minute, we'll put on, 
we'll put the video on in a few seconds and I'm hoping that you can hang on and that the internet connection will keep you online because we really have missed you. So um, Tom and I have been working together for almost three years prepared so much material online it isn't funny in the Google Drive and I think both of our Google Drives are overflowing with our documentation. Oh yes, I will lower the volume on my mic. Is that better? Is that a little bit better? Hang on. There we go. Is that better? Thanks. I have a tendency to yell. <laughs> it must come from having to scream over lots of children. Anyway, uh, not my children, by the way. Um, anyway, getting back to the price of fish in China. Basically, Tom and I have been working together as a team online, collaborating from Venezuela, Australia, or Venezuela, Italy. It didn't matter. We, we, we've never met in the flesh. We've only ever conversed online, and sometimes because of both of our poor connections, when I was in Italy in the uh, Aquinines, we had a really bad connection there as well. We had to uh, just converse by written form on Google Docs. That's what happened in the early stages when we couldn't connect on Skype or things like that. And that's when we realised that the material that we were actually writing down, communicating to each other, that we would have spoken, was actually becoming a bank of knowledge. And this um, bank of knowledge of these numerous documents that we created by just chatting and saving because maybe we couldn't meet uh, simultaneously online has helped us to uh, create and understand teamwork and collaboration online. In the meantime, obviously, Tom and I have been involved, as Dr. Nellie was saying, working as moderators. Tom has had more experience than me, um, sometimes it saves time to text and to speak in real time. I agree with that, Dr. Nelly. So basically, um, we we were, what was I saying? I've forgotten. Anyway, not to worry, but what we're going to show you, oh, working in the Moodle, uh, we've discovered that, especially for first time as they come into the Moodle, the, when we create groups and we ask them to work in, or Dr. Nelly asks them actually to work in groups, it's really hard for a lot of the a lot of the participants to understand how to work correctly in teamwork online, collaborating when you're in various forums within the Moodle, and sometimes people are getting confused. They keep going backwards and forwards. They also uh, get confused with their own threads, so they start up a whole lot of different uh, threads within the same forum and then they even forget or get confused of which and where they are. So with this in mind, this is why we prepared this teamwork presentation today. So we'd now like to show you um, a little video. It's not a little video, it's almost 17 minutes, but the video will also take us through an interactive section which hopefully is towards the end of the video, which hopefully you will all participate in and have fun doing so. Hopefully nothing will go wrong. Okay, so let's uh, play the video. Tom, do you want to play the video? It's the third. Welcome to the presentation on teamwork, created by Neves and myself. We have worked together on many projects, including being moderators on Moodle courses for integrating technology, on the Moodle for Teachers website. The topic of teamwork has been a thorn in our side for some years now. Having been moderators for individuals and groups within the Moodle courses, we have constantly come across the lack of experience that participants sometimes have in working in teams. 
With this presentation, we would like to lay down some basic principles to understanding how to work in teams online, why teamwork can be effective in online environments, setting up the environment, using ground rules and technology and apps to make teamwork as smooth as possible. The easiest way to always begin a presentation is to go to the dictionary and see what it has to say. Here we take a look at Merriam Webster Learner's Dictionary to glean the simplest explanation possible. Important to understand is the very simplistic meaning of teamwork, working together to achieve a common name. Teams can comprise two or more members, in fact, an unlimited amount of members. Obviously, the bigger the project is, the more members of subteams would be involved, like, for example, the building of an 80 floor skyscraper in Dubai. There is no real difference in the work involved in teamwork, projects or jobs, the only difference between being in the same building or in an online environment is just that, the environment. Whether you are nearby physically, or far away virtually, the advent of technology has made it simple to be in touch via visual media, like Skype, audio, like telephone, or written media, like email, Google Docs etc. All are immediate and occur in real time, even across a myriad of time zones. Provided you are available with access to internet and communication technology. Let's take a look at a visual image to understand the very basic mechanics of teamwork. Firstly there is a common project or job, the creation of the team, the sharing of the tasks, and bringing all the tasks together to be compiled for the project. The final product is the completed job or project. Each stage has an onus of responsibility and commitment by the person or persons involved. The project can begin with one team whose role is to provide the basis for the project design. Then a suitable team is brought together to carry out the tasks necessary to complete the job. Prior to the completion is the compilation stage, which is bringing all the pieces together to ensure that it is all completed to specifications or requirements in order to hand over the project to the final end user or team. As in the case of creating a skyscraper there are stages that are completed by diverse teams right from the very beginnings of laying the foundation, to then walking in and taking possession of an office suite. For example, each team may not be fully aware of teams down the line as perhaps their role in the global project may be only one stage in over 100 stages. With the workload comes the commitment to getting the job done which may entail understanding the specifications, responsibility for the task, being accountable for your task, meetings to communicate level of work, reports and emails, just to name a few. Let's understand a little bit about how to work online effectively. There are many tools that make communication possible even in real time, even with a minimum of internet access. For example Google Docs. However the most important word to note here is, communication, because that is the basis for any team working coherently towards one objective. The Moodle environment offers so many possibilities to stay in touch with the team. Moodle has the possibility to segregate the groups into closed group environments, giving ample space for the team to work together effectively within the same areas. One of the most important things to remember is to read the instructions or messages from each team member before jumping the gun. Another one is to keep all the discussion threads in one post within the forum. Use the subject line wisely so that it refers to the main point within the forum post. This is just a part of the ground rules that are a must for any team to work effectively, in any environment. There are so many tools in the web kingdom that this presentation slide cannot cover fully, but here I am outlining the ones Tom and I have used effectively for our work and our online courses. Firstly, Having a webcam and microphone are essential for communicating face-to-face -face virtually. The best, by far is Skype, which also allows for video messaging up to 3 minutes, group creation, and recording the live meet too. Hangouts and Congra are also very effective. All need good internet access. Some like to use WhatsApp or Viber too, but you do need to exchange phone numbers in that situation, and sometimes a number change means losing that conversation thread. 
sharing information is foremost in any teamwork. Setting up a note sharing file or folder, from the start, can make the difference by getting everyone informed of the workload commitments and producing the tasks on time. We like to use Google Drive, but OneDrive is just as effective too. It depends on what the team agrees to. Do not forget to exchange emails and begin immediately creating an email thread for the team to access anywhere, anytime. I like to make a video tutorial when explaining how things need to be carried out, or when I have a problem that I can't explain. A video shows everyone in the team what I see too. This has been a wonderful habit instilled in me by my mentor Dr. Nelly Deutsch. Thank you Dr. Nelly for teaching me how to make a video tutorial. Upload tutorials to YouTube or Vimeo, in unlisted, private or public listings. Create a playlist and give the link to the other members so they too can add to the playlist and also save it on their own channel listings. There are a great number of free and paid for apps that are specifically designed for online team collaboration, like Asana and Trello. Google Keep is more of a list of things to do, but can be effective for simpler tasks. Let's not forget that most people have Facebook. So creating a closed group is very easy, and can be a treasure trove for all members to be active in any time zone. Understanding your own time zone and that of your team will make you all very happy and knowledgeable of when and how to meet online or even simply understand when the team members will be able to see messages or access the online environments. The best website by far is timeanddate.com. It's easy to use and sharing the links to created events is just a copy and paste away. Neves is currently situated in Australia, and I'm in Venezuela. We obviously suffer a great time zone difference of over 12 hours but we have managed to successfully carry out many projects together, effectively and efficiently. In so many situations it has been more than obvious that a nod of agreement does not equal understanding. Therefore, the beginning of any project starts off on the right foot with a written set of instructions on the main group page of the Moodle, or Google Doc, or whatever your chosen medium may be. Even a wiki. The importance is agreeing to setting up the basic groundwork to be covered, then assigning those tasks to the team members. It may also be necessary to agree to a team leader, someone who will take on the responsibility of keeping everyone on track, doing the follow-up and, at times, nudging the team members to pull their weight. Setting up a schedule of tasks to be completed by an agreed time and date can also save having to do the dirty work, like chasing for the activity completion by the team leader. We need to remember that any group work, especially within the Moodle courses, is normally just a part of a bigger objective like a final showcase for all participants, sometimes in the thousands, hence the necessity to be professional and stick to the guidelines without venturing into the unknown and obviously without stifling creativity and focus. Why communicate? Who does it benefit? Communication is the basis for any diplomatic exchange or interaction, be it physically or online. It benefits both sides of the team, via communication we give out information and open the doors to receive communication. Thinking before you speak or write, difficult for some, is inherent to smooth operations in the team. Always make sure that your communication is clear and be open about your own difficulties in understanding. We are human, after all, and to err is also very normal, so don't be shy and speak up. You can set a simple guideline for everyone, however at our age and experience it would suffice to remember that diverse time zones does also mean diverse cultures. Hence be aware of language usage, and don't offend. Trust in others and respect everyone for their effort and work, even if it does not seem to you that enough effort has been made. We have no idea what another team member may consider a sizable effort. So be kind when wanting more, allow for all unexpected encumbrances, and work together to come to an effective work pace. Working in a team means making a commitment to hold up to your end of the bargain. Make time to communicate and work on the task. Don't hide away from responsibility by avoiding responding to messages, emails, support requests. Be concise and coherent if team leader or when requesting support of any kind. Teamwork means peer support at all times. 
We are working towards a common goal after all. Using images in presentations helps to display what words on their own may fail to, so I have added a well-known acronym to team and created some new and old acronyms for work, basically to read as follows. Together everyone achieves more work with web-oriented resources and knowledge sharing. Or, together everyone achieves more work with web online resources and knowledge sharing. In a nutshell. Working in a team helps to divide the workload and create a team effort for carrying out a set task or activity to achieve a common objective. Online teams can share via the web the many resources that are already in a digitally oriented format, hence making life so much easier. Presentations can be done online using digitally prepared materials avoiding printing or publishing costs. Plus the knowledge gained by constantly using updated technological tools definitely opens the creativity channels all the more so. Working together online creates a bond that goes beyond cultural backgrounds, aligning similar aims and objectives which satisfy our own personal achievements, and opening up our own experiences, to be challenged and immersed with a brainstorming network that is harnessed into a personal learning network, leading to creating collaborative efforts, culminating in group learning projects. The previous slides have outlined the benefits of working together towards a common goal, with the obvious importance of working to a set guideline for all members. However working in teams does not always guarantee success in achieving the common objective, there are underlying factors like team dynamics at play which can disrupt any flow of work completion. Although working in teams gives the impression that it is a team effort, sometimes the effort is not so clear from all members, or by other members. There sometimes is a fundamental misconception of what we all assume to be the commitment to a common project. Even if we can use the online environment to work within, and create online bonding, adding to our own growing personal learning network, there is no guarantee that the team will achieve the common objective. Why? Because we are human. We each see our own commitment to working based on our own perspectives, which do differ sometimes based on our own interpretation or cultural obligations. For example, being a working mum will not guarantee that the time assigned to the family will be the same for every woman who is a working person. Same goes for working dads too. Plus there will always be a downside to any online collaboration that may not be dependent on the working team, but technology itself may be a gross letdown, just by being what it is, an ephemeral part of the hardware that contains it. The web world is an intricate web of codes that work behind the scenes with the platforms we use, be they virtual environments like websites, browser search engines, telephone lines or web providers and server hosts, to name some. Then top it off with hardware breakdowns, or software updates, or lack of something. It seems like technology letdowns are just the icing on top, to turn our faces blue in the midst of trying to do our best. That after all is what it's about, doing our best and being accepted for just that. Upside or downside. One of the best practices is learn by doing. Dr. Nelly has been handing out free opportunities to participate in interactive online learning, using the Moodle site, such as practicing as teachers on Moodle, Moodle managers, even as far as Moodle admin for some. Working as a moderator on Dr. Nelly's courses, or our own courses within the Moodle, has increased our personal knowledge, providing the tools to work online independently. That is one of the reasons why you should practice teamwork at any chance or possibility you have, just so you can fathom the boundaries and learn to communicate effectively in online environments, working together with your students or colleagues. Take some of the ideas in these slides, set up a common idea project, divide the tasks, and learn as you go. Collate the experience, take notes and reflect in a blog, diary, notepad, whatever you prefer. Remember, documenting your process is the best way to constantly improve and add to the existing methods. Let's put our mouths to work. Right now follow the link to the Google Doc in the chat box, to interact in a teamwork project created just for this special live webinar. We will be going through the procedure outlined in this slide. If you are able to use Google Drive Docs or Sheets, and use a search engine in your choice browser then it should be a breeze.
the only hard thing to do is to keep moving, and try to finish it all in the allotted time of 10 minutes. This is what the teamwork project cycle for the online workshop looks like. The link will be available in the live class chat box soon. When you see it copy and paste into your browser. This is what the online project workshop will look like. A very easy exercise in creativity for teamwork. Enjoy. You will all have 10 minutes to complete the task. Ready, set, go. The timer will be on the shared screen. Keep the virtual class open and go to your browsers as soon as you see the link in the chat box. We look forward to seeing your comments on the CO17 Moodle pages, and any recommendations are gladly welcome. It's something new and what we're trying to prove with this is that some people will automatically have no trouble and they'll think, oh, this was easy. And then there'll be people that will have had trouble and that's sometimes only technology into play. And sometimes this can create a sense of frustration. And what we want, what we want to show you by doing this little example is that this is what can happen to your own students when you give them something new to do, some a new activity that you have to be prepared for the technological failures that may happen or for the incomprehension or for sometimes even the way the wording of the instructions, which is something that I've noticed as well. Sometimes the instructions seem clear to me but may not seem clear to someone else. And Tom and I have had this problem in the first year, my first year in the Moodle. I remember asking Tom a million and one questions and he would always answer with two words, read and read again. <laughs> Do you remember that, Tom? And it, because it was so funny, because it was clear. It was there, but it was just not sinking in. Yes, that's right, Dr. Nelly. It's also cultural, not just personal. So the document is looking beautiful now. There are, um, we're getting some beautiful, beautiful uh, images in there. So you can keep going. That's really nice. You can finish that document if you like. And if you do finish it, um, we'll put it up in the CO17 forum for everyone to see. I will actually add all the links and the information in the forum later on if anyone wants to continue doing that. So any questions? Tom, did you want to say something? No. <laughs> no need. The workshop live online main document, but then I couldn't find the working document. Okay. Yeah, it was hidden a little bit. You know, I did, um, I did do that almost purposely because I wanted to see, I wanted to show people that it's not easy to just write things and expect everyone to understand. And sometimes the instructions need to be shown even as a video or uh, explained uh, with maybe some interaction going on at the same time. Yes, Dr. Nelly, I have exactly the same uh, opinion. My students love using Google Drive. I have the, when I teach in a school, I have the interactive whiteboard 
that everyone can see and I had the Google Drive open there and I sometimes divide the screen up into two or three screens so that the students can see every single document and what's happening and they It's almost like a get kahoot game. They race after each other trying to fill in the squares. And this works out that that's one of the activities that I do every single year in the uh, conversation, English conversation class. Tiziana is saying, I have already worked in this way as a teacher of English. I like the idea of using such activities for more creative work with our students. Google is a really great tool, I totally agree. And teachers, she says teachers can really support the learners and provide feedback. I totally agree with that. That's okay, Parminda. I'm glad you were able to fix things at last. Um, that's fine. Uh, we're having a timing problem. We've only got five minutes left, four minutes actually. So if there are any other questions, Ahmed says it's a great activity, he'd like to explore more, that's fine. You can um, just, I know most of you know how to use Google Drive, copy the documents over to your own drive. Um, I share everything I do, I don't have any copyright problems so far. Yes, time to say goodbye. Okay, well, um, Dr. Nelly, if you'd like to come back on and introduce the next speaker. Sorry, Pat. Um, the next speaker is in another, oh, I see what you mean. Um, someone said that they're confused. Ella, I think Ella mentioned that she's confused and I don't know where that's coming from. So, Ella, can you be, um, you know, give us a hint of um, what where the confusion is? Were you having internet uh, or problems with Google Drive or anything? In any case, we're going to continue the discussions. Uh, as you know, we've created, uh, let me just get rid of, we created a discussion forum for many of the uh, live online sessions today. Not for all of them, but for many of them. And if you'd like to know uh, which ones, uh, here is the link so you can see where the discussions are. Uh, the one for this uh, session, let me just get that link for you. There's the link for today's uh, whoops, live online event. There it is. And um, here is uh, the discussion form for this one is the first one. Okay, so uh, let me add that. And then we're going to go on to the Thank next you. session. Uh, there we are. So that's the discussion forum. I also mentioned, I believe, what to do with the badges. For those of you that are interested, uh, there is a video which I'm going to add to uh, the document in a minute. Let me share. The next session is um, with Rob Howard. And Rob Howard is originally from the United States, right. coming to us from Pol living in Poland right now. But he's going to be coming to us, I believe, from Austria, if I'm not mistaken. He's at a conference. Wow. So, yeah, people do travel these days, even though online is the thing. But they do travel as well. So, uh, thank you. Just want to I just want to say one more thing before we go. Just quickly to everyone, uh, just put your comments in the forum, any questions you have, and if you want the links again, whatever, um, I will put all the links in one forum post, and then if you have any questions, we'll answer as much as possible uh, during the next uh, week anyway, as long as CO17 course stays up in the middle. Yeah, it's going to stay open. coming, everyone. It's going to stay open until next year. Uh, probably until the end of um, 3000 and 3000, 2017. Um, so yes, until we get ready for 2000. It's going to be the same length for 2018. So, um, you know, we'll be migrating everything. 
at the end of uh, 2017. I'll give you the exact date for those that are interested. Yes, Leah, traveling right. is great. I totally agree with you. If you can afford the expenses, <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, we should all be blessed with lots There's lots of uh, spending money for, uh, right? So let's pray together. Maybe it'll work. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Nevis. Thank you, Thomas. Bye, it's been wonderful. Great to see you, Bye. Tom. Bye. 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 You have no Bachi. What is that? Bachi? Bachi. Bachi. Kisses. Bye. Kisses. All right. Uh, Lots of bachi. Okay. <laughs> Lots of bachi. Uh, copy the chat if you want. Yes, please do, Nevis. I always forget. You and Tom are great at this. Well, yes, I'm copy the chat. And Ella, I hope you don't get confused or anyone else who is confused. I use the confusion to empower yourself. Thank you. Bye-bye.